Hey guys and welcome to another very exciting video. You all know that I like hit film. I like it so much in fact that I created a one hour beginner tutorial not too long ago to show you how to use it. Incidentally if you are still looking for a free tool to get into filmmaking and visual effects and you have an hour to spare go and check that out. I'm going to put a link to that down in the video description. Now just a little bit over a week ago a brand new version for HitFilm Express, HitFilm Express 8 has been released and this new version contains a lot of cool features that I really want to show you. On top of that you can now purchase new add-on packs to add effects and features to HitFilm Express that used to be limited to the Pro Edition. These new features include being able to add full 3D model support to HitFilm Express so you can finally import and render 3D models, you can use the 3D particle simulator and you can finally get the scopes which in my opinion are really fundamental tools if you want to do anything related to color correction and color grading. In this video I want to take you through some of these exciting new features and show you how to use them. There's quite a few of them so I'm going to drop some timestamps down in the video description so be sure to check that out you can just jump to anywhere in this video that you think might be interesting. Also because I truly believe in honest reviews and I want HitFilm to be awesome I'm also going to touch on a few aspects where I think there's definitely still room for improvement. But now before I talk your face off let's jump right into it. Welcome to the wonderful world of HitFilm Express. I've got version 8 opened here and as always on the homepage over on the right hand side you'll find the latest tutorials. Right now everything is very Avengers inspired and I'm, I'm still featured on here. In case you don't know I did a guest tutorial over on the HitFilm channel to show you how to create a morph effect in HitFilm Express. So go and check that out if you haven't seen it yet. Over on the left hand side as always you can purchase different add-on packs to add features and functionality to HitFilm Express and this list in version 8 has gotten a whole lot longer so there's a lot of new packs that you can now purchase to add a lot of the features that were previously only available in the pro version to HitFilm Express like you can get the scopes finally which is a really useful tool for color correction and color grading. You can also now finally add the 3D model support to HitFilm Express as well as the 3D particle simulator which are really cool effects. I'm really happy that they've added this as add-on packs to HitFilm Express but you know let's just jump into it and create a new project. As far as I know nothing much has changed here. You can obviously pick any template that you want and HitFilm Express does support everything up to full 4K. But I'm just going to go with 1080 and to start editing. On the main editor timeline everything kind of looks very much like it used to. Let me just grab some clips and just drag and drop them into my project. Let's just drag this Walter on the wall clip into my editor timeline. Let me just zoom in a little bit and this is the small clip where I've kind of tracked a water UI into the side of the building and the first cool new feature that I want to show you is that you can now create and animate text directly in your editor timeline so you no longer need to create composite shots. However instead of creating a new layer for your text you actually apply the text via an effect. So in the effects panel you can now search for the text effect drag and drop that onto this layer. You now have this little piece of text here and you can click and drag. So let's just move this text maybe right about here in the controls panel over on the left hand side. Let me just make this a bit bigger, expand that and then under the text property over on the right hand side you've got this little character icon. So you can just click on that to pop open the text editor. Then type in whatever text you want. Let's hit OK. Let's reposition our text. Maybe I'll just kind of place it right underneath this UI interface. Under the format option for the text let's pop this open. You can obviously change your font to anything you want. Maybe I'll make this bold as well. You can change the color, opacity, font size. I want this a little bit bigger so let's just kind of place this right there so it's nice and obvious. And there's a whole bunch of other options that you can change. You can change the blend mode as well and you can control the amount of motion blur. So now if I rewind and play this back I've got text over my video directly in my editor timeline. Cool thing is I can animate the text right in my editor timeline. So let's say I want this text to appear right about there and I want it to be sliding in from the left hand side. So in my controls let's just come up. Let's pop open this transform tab in my text effect and let's set a keyframe for this position or offset. Let's move back just a few frames to maybe round about here and let's just move this text over to the left hand side. I'm going to move it quite a bit off screen because I want it to come in with quite a bit of power. Let's rewind and play this back. Cool and so now I've got the text animating and shooting in from the side. You can also see and this is really cool that HitFilm Express does apply motion blur to moving elements in your editor timeline and if I select the clip itself come into the controls 
go all the way to the top under clip properties and I also have the option to enable motion blur on the clip itself. So if I was to move this clip around like animator to come in and out or rotate or do whatever, I can now enable motion blur. This is an option that wasn't previously available. So you now can just enable that in your editor timeline and you no longer have to create composite shots. The next cool feature, and this does feel like a very natural extension of allowing more control in your editor timeline, is to bring the animation editor up into the editor timeline as well. So you can now access this animation editor by coming up into the controls tab on the left hand side. And on the right hand side of this little pin icon here, you'll find this display timeline button. If you click that, it's going to split this panel and move this over a little bit. And this is the animation editor. And in here, let me zoom in just a little bit. You can see and animate all of the keyframes for any effects or text or movements you have on your editor timeline. This is really useful. So you can kind of you know, tweak things, make them slower, faster, select these two, right click and change the temporal interpolation over to smooth. So it kind of eases in and eases out. Let's just rewind and play this back. Cool, that's looking really nice. On top of that, obviously, being the animation editor, you also have this value graph in here, so you can really tweak and fine tune all of your keyframes and your animation directly in the editor timeline. Let me close this panel again and bring this over to the left hand side to make some space. The next new feature, and I feel this was kind of missing from HitFilm Express, if you come up into your workspaces tab, you now have a new layout panel. Let's enable this layout panel. I am actually going to float this because otherwise it's going to take up just a little bit too much space for me. You now have a dedicated layout panel to align and arrange objects on your scene. So this makes it really nice and easy to organize your videos. I am quickly going to drop another clip into my timeline. Let me just scale this down a little bit. And let's say I wanted to create like a picture in picture effect. So I can, you know, drag this around and place this down here on the bottom left hand side. But now with this element selected, I can easily align it to the right side, to the left side. I can center it, move it up and down. And if I had multiple elements, I can select all of them and then use these distribute objects buttons to essentially arrange them horizontally or vertically and kind of just line them up really nicely. You can also choose to align your items either to the timeline, which is what I'm doing right now, or just to the selection. So you've got quite a lot of control and the layout panel just makes life easy and just placing things exactly where you want them to be. Let's close this panel out again. And you've seen me create this little picture in picture effect just by making this layer a little bit smaller and placing it where I want to be. And obviously that's one option, but I'm actually going to select this layer again, come into the controls and right click on the transform and simply select reset to reset this layer. And there's actually effect to create exactly what we want. Let's come into the effects tab and the picture in picture effect, not surprisingly is called pip for picture in picture. Let's drag and drop that onto the layer that we want to be embedded as the nested image. And there you go. You now have one video inserted into another. You can also open up the effect settings and change the position. Maybe I want it to be top right. And maybe I want to give it just a little bit more margin so it pushes into the screen just a little bit more. And let's rewind and play this back. Cool, that was nice and easy. Let's talk about some of the new features that you have available when you're working with composite shots. Let me select the shot at the top. Right click and let's select to make composite shot. It's gonna hit okay. Don't need to be too specific here. So here we are in the base footage. Let's say I just wanted to apply a little bit of a mask and cut out an area to apply an effect to. So let me just duplicate this layer with Ctrl and D, grab the pen tool. Let's just draw a little mask. Obviously I'm not going to track it. It's kind of a bit too much work for just showing off some new features. So let's say I've applied this little mask here if I disable the base footage. So I've kind of just got this cut out and the masking features have been enhanced quite a bit. It's a whole lot easier now to modify your masks. You can now also click and drag to marquee select a whole bunch of points and modify them all together. So masking in general has just gotten a whole lot nicer in the latest version of HitFilm Express. As I already mentioned, a whole bunch of existing effects have now gotten really nice UI controls as well. For example, the polar warp. Let's just apply that to the layer. And if I zoom out and actually select my selection tool, you can see I've got these really cool UI controls and this allows me to tweak my effect without having to kind of dig in here and change those properties. So a lot of effects in HitFilm Express now have these really nice UI controls that are displayed right in your preview window. So you can control these effects a whole lot easier. So let's just let that go. Maybe I'll enable the base footage again. Obviously it's like a really wonky effect. Probably not really what I would have been after, but I just wanted to show you some of the cool stuff that you can now do inside composite shots. Finally, the last feature I want to show you touches on one of my sore points with HitFilm and that is performance. Let's return to the editor timeline. 
Let me rewind and play this back. And you can already see as I'm dragging through this timeline, this is actually quite slow. If I'm now playing this back by hitting space, this does play back in less than real time. So it's not really impressively performant. And just as a note, my computer is quite a beast. I've got 64 gigs of RAM, a 20 core CPU and two 1080 GTX graphics cards. So I'm pretty sure it's not my hardware. And just for comparison, here's the exact same setup with an animated text element and a picture in picture effect in Premiere Pro. And that is nice and zippy at full resolution. Here's the same setup in DaVinci Resolve and again, absolutely no problem it just flies right through and back in hit film for direct comparison you can see that this this is actually pretty slow now i don't actually know whether this is due to the fundamental architecture of hit film or maybe it's not leveraging the gpu as well or not caching as aggressively but performance in my opinion is probably the biggest challenge for hit film and i think if they can knock that out of the park and make this as performant as the competitors i think hit film is just going to blow everything out of the water However, that said, I have the feeling the team is quite aware that that is kind of a sore point for a lot of users. So in version 8, what they have added to HitFilm Express, you can come up to the options in your viewer and you can now change the playback quality, playback resolution, paused quality and paused resolution. And this allows you to kind of make HitFilm more performance. So I can change my playback quality from final over to fastest. I can say playback resolution, maybe I'll just set this to half and now well, dragging through it is still rather slow. Let's rewind and play this back. And here's something that will likely feel like a bug. Depending on your playback quality, this actually disables effects to make them play faster. So by setting this to fastest, when I play this back, this pip effect is disabled. So I just get the full overlay. So if I change this playback quality to quick, let's rewind and play this back that actually retains the effect. Now it's not full speed either. And this is kind of where I feel, I think there just is more potential for HitFilm to be faster because it works so much better in some of the competitor products. But again, you can change these and tweak your playback resolution. It will make a difference. It will play things faster. Just be aware that once you go to fastest, certain effects like text won't show up anymore, pip effects, other things will be disabled to make it play faster. So what you're playing back may not actually look exactly the way as your final result. Finally, since we're already on the topic of, I don't want to call it criticism, I like to consider it constructive feedback because I actually really like HitFilm. I love the concept of, you know, having both my editing and my effects in the same package. I like the team, I like the community, and I want this program to be awesome. There are a few other things that I think could really make the experience so much nicer. The first and probably the most notable one is that all of the interface elements in general are actually really Big. And I understand that principle, especially if you want to address the more entry level hobbyist people getting into filmmaking visual effects. HitFilm is really nice and easy to use. It's really easy to find things on the interface. However, it means that often, you know, options and buttons are hidden inside other options just because there isn't enough space on the interface to really reveal all of the things that you want to see. So you can kind of often have to, you know, scrub down somewhere because the text elements are quite big. All of the buttons are quite big. It's quite spaced out. So it feels nice and spacious, but in order to accessing all of the things that you may need, especially when you're working with composite shots, it, it can be a little bit tricky to manage all of the buttons and find all of the things you're looking for just because all of the UI elements are just a little bit on the bigger side. Caching, I feel, could also happen much more just as a background process in general. So I don't have to actively say preview this section to get it cached out. But just as I'm working through my composite shot, all of the layers could just be cached in the background, especially when you're building a pretty complex composite shot that can get quite slow unless you're previewing a section specifically. But it is a bit cumbersome. You know, After Effects Premiere Pro, they just do it in the background for you. And I'd rather just give us some extra hard drive space than feel like my workflow is being slowed down. The last two things, while working in the composite shot, one thing I would really love to just have available to me as a feature would be something like expressions where I can link parameters of different effects together to build much more complex effects. Right now, that isn't available in HitFilm Express at all, but I've gotten so used to it from Adobe After Effects, and it just there's just this potential to unlock a huge amount of functionality, a huge amount of things that you can do. So I can link, you know, a range parameter from one effect to the intensity of timing of something else going on, and you can build some really cool stuff just by linking a few things together. 
the last one, and I have mentioned that I think in a review for HitFilm Pro 3, like a long time ago, I would really love to be able to select multiple clips on my timeline at the same time, right click them and convert them to a composite shot and have all of those layers placed inside that composite shot at once. Right now you can only convert individual clips to composite shots and then you have to add the other ones back in. So an option to just select multiple things on my editor timeline, just everything, just go right click, convert to composite shot. That would be absolutely amazing just because it's something that I do so much and I don't know whether other people do as well, but it's just little things, little tweaks here and there that I think just could just, you know, make life so much easier. But all of that being said, I really like where HitFilm is going. It's still a pretty new product. HitFilm Express is absolutely amazing. If you want to get into filmmaking, visual effects, and you need a free tool to do all of that, it's right there. You can download it and just start using it. You can do some awesome stuff in it. Obviously, there's always room for improvement, but I'm really excited to see where this product is going to go with future releases. And that's all there is to it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to watch more, let's click or tap these links over on the right hand side. If you want to support me in what I do on this channel, be sure to check out my Patreon page. And as always, thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.